Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They'll try and tempt you with a cash <laughs> offer on the table today. It isn't enough, I'm sorry. If I don't think that's enough money, there's an alternative. Place the same goods into an auction 10, 12, in the hope that you will get a little bit five, more money there. 75, 80. Today the show comes to you from the beautiful town hall here in Walsall in the Midlands. There's a huge crowd of people. They've been here since early this morning. They've brought along their treasures. They want to do business. To either walk away with cash or gamble and go to auction. But either way, they want the real deal. Another day and the good folk of Walsall are determined to make it profitable. Our dealers are at the ready with bundles of their own hard-earned cash. Let's head straight across to David Ford, where he's been joined by Brenda and her canine companion. Yes. Tell me about your doggy. Well, I don't know when I bought it because I've been collecting bulldog ornaments for about 40 years. So I've probably had it about 25 years or something. Oh, really? Yeah. So do you collect anything that's associated <coughs> with a bulldog? Anything. Really? I did, but I've stopped now. You stopped? I haven't got a bulldog anymore. And so oh, I don't. really? So Collecting is such a, a thing, isn't it? It's an obsession once you Well, it start. is. That's yes. the right word, yeah. because you can't stop. It's actually a match striker. It is, yeah. When you first look at it, you think it might be a tobacco jar, but I, I don't think it is. No. I think it's I think it's a, a, for matches, festers, so. and a match striker. How old do you think that is, then? I would think 1900. Yeah, maybe a little later. Would you mm, start at the... I think it's just quite nice. Mm. Um, and I'm sure, like you, there are other people out there who collect anything to do with, with dogs. dogs. Or <laughs> boxes dogs. or whatever, yeah. I saw something twinkling on your sleeve. What's that? That looks rather nice. That's a bulldog bracelet. That's lovely, isn't it? Gosh, you really do love your bulldogs, I do. don't you? So you've got... It's a little bulldog... Dog. ...surrounded in diamonds, shall we say? Well, <laughs> pretend. It's lovely, isn't yeah, it? It's it is lovely. Yes. Right, I'll get some money out, Brenda. See <laughs> if I can buy your. Thing. Okay. Forty pounds? I don't think that's enough. Do you not? I do remember what I paid for it. How about fifty pounds? Fifty I'd... pounds for a little stoneware. Yeah. I got sixty pounds pop. in mind because I paid ninety-five for it. <sighs> And you've got 60 pounds in mind, have yes, you? Yes, yes. Two thirds, you know. You're a nice lady. I'll split it with you. There we are. 55 pounds for your box. All right, I'll accept. Deal done. Thank you. All right, Brenda. So, deal done. 55 pounds yeah. for your thing, your striker. Yes. So, what are you going to do with the money? Probably go out for a nice meal. From one tasty deal to another, we make our way over to Karen, who likes the look of her next item. And what a little treat you've bought in for me today. Have you bought it? Have you inherited it? Where's it come from? I've inherited it. OK, where from? From an aunt. OK, and what did, did she give you any information or did she just put no, it in her will? The only you? information that I've got is a little piece of paper which she had written inside, obviously hoping that whoever was going to have it would treasure it, I think. OK. That's the idea. So, I mean, at first glance, we've got a little French enamel box, I think, here, haven't we? It's just in super condition. I can't say anything else other than that. Most people think they're 18th century, but I'm inclined to think from the fittings and from the wear underneath that this isn't an 18th century one. It's slightly later. But it's still an antique box and it's still absolutely beautiful with these Watteau-esque style figures. And, and you... Are you prepared to part with it now as it was a gift yeah, from your I, I, I've got to, I think. I've got quite a few things at home and, and, and they're not going to go anywhere, really. Yeah, you know? so yeah. you'd like to get a little bit of money for it and hopefully do something nice with it? Yes, I would. Yeah? And Treat I do. yourself? <laughs> yeah? What yeah. do you do? Yeah. Have you got anything in mind? Uh, I'm saving for a holiday. Yeah? Where to? Hopefully abroad sometime next year. Mm, so I'd better uh, get me money out then. So, I, I, I can see there's a gentleman in the wings. So, before he gets here... Oh, too late, he's on his way. David, look at this little treasure. 
I heard what you said about this fabulous enamel box, and I heard you say you wanted to go on a continental holiday. I thought I'd better keep my eye on this deal. <laughs> and I know that our dealer is very generous, so... <laughs> Just I'm, a rumour, David. I'm going to get out of the way quickly. OK. <laughs> right. So I'm going to have to be on my best behaviour, cos I know he's keeping an well, eye on me at the moment. I didn't did notice. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. What am I going to offer you, Doreen? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. You will stop me if I go beyond the money you need for your holiday, won't you? And you I say, Karen, yes, right. I've, I've got enough money now. OK. 20, 40, 60, 80, 180. And we're about to get our visitor back again. <laughs> well, I'm going to say to you, very nice little enamel box. I think what's on the table is very, very generous. Right. <laughs> Our independent valuers, for some reason, have said 40 to 60 pounds, and I think they are very much on the low side. That certainly will go a long way to taking you away. So I'm going to say, pick up your money, enjoy it, and say to Karen, thank you, Karen, I'm going to have a great time on you. <laughs> so come on, commit. Have we got a deal? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Stick it there. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Wow, Karen, three times the estimate. Do you know something we don't? Now we pay a visit to Tony, where some decorative Dutch ceramics have arrived on his table. Hello, I'm Tony. You I'm are Jane. Hello, Jane. How are you doing? Oh, okay. Having a good day so far? Yes, I'm really enjoying it, thanks. And what have you bought for me today? Just two small pieces that, you know, I thought it was a bee of interest. I like them, but I want to sell them. Why did you like them? Just thought it was very collectible. Yeah. And have you bought them recently or had them long? You bought them recently, yeah. have you? Yeah. Oh, right. So how recently? Three days. You bought them three days ago? <laughs> wow. So maybe after a quick profit then? I've got a great grandchild coming at the end of the oh, year. Oh, so... at the end of the year? <laughs> yeah. So it's already in seed then? So. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a buy a nice little suit outfit. So um, late, late 50s, 60s, uh, it's Tokyo pattern, um, Gouda. From Holland. I mean, they make, they've been making pottery since uh, the late Victorian periods, oh. and their earlier stuff is more a sort of a mottled. Uh, it's always deep colours, lots of blue or something. No, actually, lots of sort of dark reds, and I mean, this is really right. modern for yes, for yeah. good. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't actually come across any of this okay. this stuff before. So, but um, the early stuff is more in line with the arts and crafts movement yes. um, that they were producing around the yeah. turn of the century and exported an awful amount all over the world, so it's quite common. But this, this is less common, probably, than the, than the, than the late Victorian, early Edwardian yeah. um, Gouda that was being produced at that time. And let's have a look at this one. Okay. Gouda hot Tokyo pattern again. Lovely condition. There's no cracks. Got a nice Japanese styling and... And, and it goes well with this lovely orange. It does. It's a beautiful, beautiful. it's really and rich mustard. colour. And the, mustard. and the black and the mustard. I, I really quite like them. Right, well, I'd like, I'd like to have a go at these, if I may. Yes, please. Um, so I'd we're like to sell them. Well, the one at the back, I'd like to put him there. The one at the front, I'd like to put him there. I think it'd have to be a little bit more than that. A little bit more? Uh, about double. About double? <laughs> oh, I don't know if we can go to that, but I'll tell you what I will do. I'll put that either side of it. And that's going to be my offer. I had to confirm with my friend. <laughs> you happy with that? And would you tell me how much you paid for them three days ago? £18. £18, <laughs> well done. Well, that's a good little profit, isn't it? You follow me around sometime. Coming up, David can't believe his eyes. Yes, excuse me asking you, <laughs> but it, is that all this put on the table, huh? Yes. Get some more proper money down. <laughs> I will be back in a little while. Thank you. <laughs> will Ian have his way, or can the Duke save the day? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. There are plenty of deals going down in the dealer's den today, and Kathleen is hoping the cash will be flowing for her spectacular yes. decanter. What a lovely piece you brought here today. How did you get hold of this? Well, my mother was 105. She died in October. 
And I'm disease. moving to a smaller house. I, it does need a lot of work done to the bungalow that I'm going to. And I don't really know who to leave it to. I mean, it's a lovely piece of silver overlay on green glass. The decanter itself is in very good condition. The stopper is lovely, you know, hardly been used. I mean, it's been very well looked after. A lot of these uh, overlay pieces, when the people are cleaning them, they're a bit rough, and these lift yeah. and snap and break. So you lose those pieces, and you can't restore them. No. Because if you try and make a piece and add it on, it just doesn't work. It just mm -hmm. never looks the same. They usually came either as a pair, or they came with six glasses or eight glasses. It's quite unusual not to have the glasses, yeah. because they're very prettily done, very, very pretty. It's around 1880, 1900, around that mm -hmm. sort of period. I just think it's great, you know. So, thinking of money, shall we start with, say, 50, 100. 150 pounds. I think it's not bad as an offer. It isn't enough, I'm sorry. How much has been bad with that? But I'm sure David's going to tell us. Well, I think everyone agreed on this. The independent value was they were the lowest at 230 to 300. Three to four was the auctioneer. You know, I would go up to 200 pounds on it. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't stick my neck out at 300. At 200 pounds, I would say to you, turn that down. Because, Ian, in fairness, look at that object. Yeah, it's lovely. You couldn't walk into any reasonable quality gallery that sold exotic smalls glassware. Mm -hmm. You couldn't buy that no. for anywhere near that money. And I'm going to say to you, let's get to the auction and let's get somebody who really likes to have a great glass of wine. It would taste even better out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know where they get their price from. Maybe they're right and I'm wrong. I yes. have no idea. Yeah. And like I said, you yes. know, I would say I'd gladly give you 200 for it. That's my final offer. So what would you like to do? I think I'd rather take it to auction. I'll take David's advice and take, take it, it to auction. auction. Yeah. Wonderful. OK. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for your offer. Thank you. Let's head straight over to the cell room to see if David's made the right call. I thought Ian would just grab at this. He offered 200 quid to you. Not a bad offer. The reserve is 250. Is it going to make the 250 reserve? Fingers crossed. I think it's beautiful. I am in at 200. 200 pounds. I'm bid 200. At 200. At 200. At 200 pounds. Two ton. Two ten. Twenty. 30, 40. 240. I'm bid now. 240. 240. 250. Telephone. 260. 70. 270 on the telephone. It's a lovely thing. It's worth every yeah. penny of it. 270 now with the telephone at 280, 290. I wish I was taking it home for that money. 290. <laughs> Gabler's just gone down at 290 pounds. We have some commission to take off, just under 250 pounds. On the day, it was worth the gamble. 290. Take home 250. That was the real deal. We're happy, aren't we? We are, yes. We're very happy. Smiles all round in the sale room. David's advice for Kathleen to go to auction definitely paid off. Let's head back to the dealer's den now, where Sally's hoping for a pretty penny for her appealing purse. So is this a family piece? It is. It was left... Um, it, well, it came with my mother's jewellery box when she passed away six years ago. Um, and it was in the bottom drawer of it. And with lots of other, other goodies? With lots of other little goodies, but yeah. they're, they're more sentimental value. But I didn't realise, because I'd never used to go through my mother's jewellery box, no. that those things were in the bottom. So. so why have you decided to part with them? My daughter is 21 coming up Ooh. at the beginning of next year. So Expensive it's a time. <laughs> yes, a collection fund for her. And she'd rather have a, a treat on her 21st, would she, than inherit I'm sure she would, yes. Yeah, well, I've got two enough. sons as well, so... It gets a bit tricky then, doesn't yeah. it? Try and yeah. cut it into three bits. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's have a look at this. I can't wait. This okay. is a beautiful thing. Um, straight away we can see it's tortoise shell. And this this here is known as pique, it's the right. French word pique. Such a delicate pattern that's been inset into the tortoise shell. Yeah. And then you've got this little shield or cartouche here, which 
most of the time has got someone's initials on, but um, on this occasion it hasn't. It hasn't. Um, what would have been a problem, isn't it, in this instance, is that this satin work uh, very often deteriorates. I mean, when you think it's, what, 1850, so that's 160 that old. years old, um, you would expect that deterioration, yeah. but luckily because it hasn't been used very much and it's just been sat there and we've got an extra little compartment there as well. Oh, look at that sovereign, did you see that sovereign oh, in wish. there? <laughs> yeah, I wish too. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's shut it up. It is a very, very nice object. Love it. It's beautiful. So, you're not expecting much for it if it was just in the, <laughs> yeah. in the bottom of a drawer and you didn't even know it was there, did you? Ooh. And, well, and Bottles of champagne on the 21st, they're about a good bottle, yeah. what, about 40, 50 quid? Yeah, a bit more than yeah. that, I think. Yeah. No flies are used, Sally, yeah, is it? Yeah. Right, OK, let's get started. Oh, look, a pink one. You can have that. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. You can have that too. There we go. Yep. Uh, 100, 120, 140, 160 pounds. Yes. A bit more? No, see, I, I can, yeah, you can't stop more? your mouth from curling. I'm always, I can I'm see always smiling. I'm a happy person. <laughs> I, I can see you're delighted with that offer. And you can't it's, hide it's it. It's nice, but a little bit more. Um, well, the little bit more is my bit of profit. I'm going to put 170 down. And so that just allows me a little bit of profit for the tax man, the bat man and me. So, you're happy with 160? I'm happy. Thank Brilliant. you, Karen. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. I'm so excited to have it. I love it. It sounds like Karen's over the moon with pocketing the purse and Sally's smiling a good deal all round. Next, we head across the dealer's den where a real deal favourite has landed over with David Ford. So, Colin, you bought me in what looks very much like a Moorcroft plate. Correct, yes. So how did you come to own a Moorcroft plate? Well, I was walking around Bridge North, around the antiques places around there, and it just caught me, oh, you know, it was on display with a bright light sitting, it, and it looked a million dollars then. It looked the business. And yeah. how long ago was that? Uh, two and a half, three years ago. So you would have paid probably quite yeah. a good price yes, for it then. Yes, I mean, it's, it's a very nice plate. What is the flower? I think it's a, a magnolia. Magnolia. Isn't it? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Magnolia. Yeah. I love Moorcroft. You know, it's a fantastic factory. It is. Yeah. Some of the earlier stuff can be very valuable. You yeah. know, the McIntyre and Florian and yeah. things like that. But this, um, just lift it up. This looks as though it's. Oh, it's still got your price ticket on it here. Um, this is sort of 1950s, 50s, that sort of. Yeah. But clearly marked. Uh, which is good, and it seems to be in nice condition. It's in nice condition, isn't it? Let's pop it back there. It's, it's a lovely flower, and it's a nice thing. It's a little bit late, yeah. you know. I think the difficulty here may be, I mean, I don't know what you paid for it. I have a feeling if you bought it at a fair, retail, a yeah. couple of years ago, uh, Moorcraft is still doing quite well. Yes. But I'm going to be buying it on a wholesale basis, because yeah. I'm looking, as <laughs> always, I bought my violin. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we look for a profit. Yes, I mean, I don't, yeah, I'm not greedy, yeah. but, but nevertheless... Yeah, yeah, I understand that. It is yeah. always about making a profit. Anyway, let's have a go and right, see yeah. what you think. Let's start bold with a £50 note and add to that £10. No, I think it's a bit worth more than that. You think it is? Yes. A little bit more, maybe. I might squeeze another tenner. £70, I think that's quite a sporting bid. Oh, here's David, well, he'll I'll, help I'll us. listen to what David's got to say. Well, I know what you paid for it, Colin, because yes. I've just had a look at the notes. You paid about 120 quid yes. for it. Oh, yeah. right. Our independent value as an auctioneer, they're saying 60 to 80, 70 to 90. What you've got to say to yourself is, can I go to the auction and can I get more, allowing for 15% deduction? Yes. David might be prepared to put a little bit more on, so wait and see. OK, then. Right. Yeah. Helpful advice. Yes. Yeah. Always is, isn't it? Yes. Very constructive. So, £70, Colin. You put another fiver on. I'll shake it, haven't I? Another £5 to yes. shake my hand. Yes. Well, I can't be stingy for a fiver, can I? No. I'll rummage. <laughs> there it is. There's your five pounds, so seventy-five pounds, I'm and we have a deal. I'm happy with that. Yes. All right, Colin. Terrific. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you.
still to come. You want much more? Yes. A lot more? Keep going and I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> I bet you tell me when to stop. And I've got no money empty. left in my hand. <laughs> Find out if Mr Sparkle can resolve this debacle. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the Town Hall in Walsall. As the antiques and collectibles continue to stream in through the doors, Sue's hoping she can stitch Karen up with her ivory buttons. Sue, lovely to meet you. To meet you look you. absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. Right, so are these, I have to say. Yes. Are these family pieces or have you bought yes. them? Yes, um, they were my grandpa's. He, were, he served in the First World War and he brought them back with him. I don't know that much about them, but he served in Africa, so I would think they were from Africa. Well, they're elephants, aren't well, they? Well, they are elephants. <laughs> so are are yes. they African elephants or I, are I they Asian know. elephants? I don't know. How big are their ears? Because Asian elephants yes. have got little ears. Oh, right. And Africans have got big, fluffy oh, ones. right, OK. So they're quite small, I think. I think they are Asian. And my gut instinct, they're probably Chinese. The Chinese oh, right. used to love making beautiful objects out of ivory. Yeah. And, I, and I can see those on a kimono or something like that, can't you? Yes. Now, they're made of ivory. Yeah. We can see their ivory because you get like a striation. Oh, um, right. A bit like the tips of your fingers here. Yeah. You know, you've got the yeah. lines on your fingers. You get that in ivory. If this right. is bone, you would get black flecks. I so, see. can you remember when he bought them back? I don't know the exact date, but I mean, it was probably just at the end. He served all through the war, so it was probably just at the end of the war. Ooh. The First World War, that is. OK, but it was before the end of the war. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Because there's an Endangered Species um, Act of yeah. 1947. Oh. So, anything post-1947, yeah. you need a licence to be able oh, to I steal see. Right. So you've just confirmed that, thank goodness, yes. it's before. <laughs> yes. So that, that makes it legal from my point of view. I'm not oh, going to right. get into trouble for oh, doing I see. this. So why are you actually selling them, Sue? Because they're so lovely, aren't they? Yes, they are lovely. But um, they're just gathering dust at home at the moment, so we thought we'd... Um, Cash them in. Know. Exactly. Yeah, treat yourself. Yes. <laughs> they are lovely. And to anyone that collects buttons... Oh, um, yeah. I think they get a bit excited, don't you? Yes. I would, if I was yes. a button collector. I'd get really excited. Just got a tension now, haven't I? Okay. I did yep. my best. All right. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, so. I think it is You've a good offer. You've got all quiet on me. <laughs> I think it is a good offer, but... It's a if, very if, good if, offer. If you could stretch a little bit further... Just a tad more. Uh, a little bit further, I'd be happy. I think they're a good bit of kit, Sue. Yep. I, think, I think I can sell them. Yep. I'm confident that I'll get them away, so it's just a question of how much is left for me. Um, another ten on the pot, and hopefully we can have a deal, because I think they're lovely. Yes, I think that's fine. You're happy? Thank you. Yes, I'm happy. very much so. Well, thank you very much, thank Sue. Thank you it's very much. It's a pleasure much. to buy them, and I <laughs> get all those button collectors yes. a little bit excited. <laughs> like, I can't wait. Yeah. Look out, all you budding button collectors. Karen's on the hunt for a pretty profit. Let's go to Ian's table, where he's been presented with a pair of plaques. Dave and auctioneer Richard Winterton are intrigued with the name associated with them. Hi, I'm Ian. Hello. I'm Sylvia. Sylvia. Two very lovely bronze plaques. Could you tell us a little bit about them? Well, we were having a clear out after my husband's mother died, and these were in the back of a cupboard. They'd been given to my husband, Dave, by his, gra his grandfather, who'd won them. They were presented to him for growing vegetables. He must have won on two consecutive on two, years. and two occasions. Yes. Yeah. So they never Red displayed, they were never, never displayed, used or anything? Never shot. No, they were black when I pulled them out. Decided to polish them up. Saw the name Hamo Thornycroft on the side and the year and decided to look him up and the seed company. And I think the seed company's still going. The seed company's still going? Or part of it, yeah. So. That's amazing. I mean, Lord Thornycroft, or Sir Thornycroft, very well-known uh, sculptor and did help his father in a lot of work as well. Yes. Very interesting because his father uh, was associated with doing work on the, what, the big memorial outside the Albert Memorial. Yeah. And I believe he helped, he, he his, helped father his father when he was to young. finish yeah. it, which is incredible. It's... So, I mean, it has an amazing background 
Where are you going to place your estimates? The independents have gone for a 350 okay. to 500 pounds. Where are you going to go? I agree. I, th I think they deserve to be at three to five for who it is. I think we can't insult it at 100, 150. Three to five, I think that's a good wide range. I think we should be around about that 300 to 320. I think we're disappointed okay. if we can't get there, David. Are they Ian's cup of tea? Mm. Are they going to attract him? Are they bling enough for Ian? Well, let's find out. He's about to put some money on the table. I've never bought anything like this in the past. No, it's unusual, I it's think. It's just different, yeah. You know what you want. I know what I want to pay. Yeah. 50. 100. 150. 200. You want much more? Yes. A lot more? Keep going and I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> I bet you tell me when to stop. And I've got no money empty. left in my hand. <laughs> I think they're, um, they're worth a lot more than 250. that. 250. £250, pounds, Richard. Sticking my neck out here, I think we're probably worth a bit more. OK. Yeah. Just on the name alone, I think they're worth a gamble at auction. And I'm going in there to tell our seller. Yes. I think that's a very good offer. <laughs> I can see there's a smile there in, in Ian's face. On the surface, £250 pounds looks a reasonable price for two bronze plaques. Now, the independent valuers and the auctioneer, they're both in unison here, they're saying 350 to 500 pounds. Now, it may well be that Ian is not finished. He might want to throw another 150 quid in, who knows? Bear that in mind, both auctioneer and myself and the independents, we think there is a good chance at auction, but I must tell you that I can't guarantee it to you. I don't want to spend more than 250 on them because I would have to dress them, I would spend money on them to make them look good, OK? I think, as David says, and the auctioneers think they could get you a lot more in auction, that you should try it at auction. I think so. So would you like to try them in auction? I will take them to auction. Yes, I think so. I think they'll do very well. So enjoy the auction and Thank good you. luck. Thank you for All bringing right. them along. Thank okay, you. Our seller, Sylvia, has made a decision. She's decided to go to auction. I think that's the right way to go, Richard. On the day, not an easy lot to sell, but I think there's a good chance they'll do well at auction. So Sylvia heads off to her very first trip to the sale room, but will it be one to remember? Let's hope so. The estimate was originally three to 500. You have increased the £300 reserve to 400 Are you sure you're doing the right thing? Yes. Is it going to sell? Well, let's find out. It's coming up now. Bit of interest on the books. We'll start at 200 Straight in at £200. Pounds, £200. I'm bid £200. 200 £200. £200. £200. £20. £40. £60. £80. £300. £300. £400. £320. £320 Creepy. With me. The room is full. £320 with me. £340. £360. £380. At £318. Disappointing, we had a 350. If you want to accept the 350, you can, otherwise it's taking it We consider they're worth more so and we're taking them home. Thank you, not sold. I'm going to award the real deal here in the sale room at £350. Even though you didn't accept it, the bid was there on the book. Uh, and so, not sold, but the real deal was here in the sale room at 350 quid. Let's pop back into the dealer's den, where a landscape scene awaits. Hello, David. I'm David, too. That makes life easy, doesn't How do it? You do? <laughs> nice to meet you. So you brought me in a little oil painting. Yes. I do. It's been at my mother's house for many years. But as for any previous history, I've no idea. But it was just in your mother's house? It was, I mean, yes. was it ever framed? Or? Uh, it had a, a loose frame around it. Yes. But did it hang on the wall then? Or it did, did I... yes. Oh, it did. OK. I've had a bit of a look to try and find a signature. I can't find anything at all. No. What I, I did I discover when I was looking at it very closely is I noticed there's been a bit of a blunder here. A plank and it's, been, and it's been stuck at the back with a bit of glue, which, which is still a bit tacky. But I can't attribute it. I mean, undoubtedly, it's a 19th century picture. It, it's probably painted about 1870, something like that. And it's not badly executed. I mean, it's, it's quite nicely painted. Mm -hmm. So it having stood on, you know, been in your mother's house all these years, what's made you decide to bring it in 
My mother sadly passed away uh, Christmas and I'm having to clear her house away. And you don't feel you want to keep it? It's, it's not a thing that would go in no. her house, but uh, it's too nice to throw away. It's, well, it certainly Somebody is. somewhere will probably get some pleasure out of it. Yeah, they will. I mean, it's, it's quite a nicely painted, and it's quite a nice composition. I mean, we've got some trees and little cottages, we've got a little coach here. Perspective's a little bit odd when one looks at it and analyses that. But it's had, at some stage, some varnish put on it, which has made it turn a slightly sort of, well, almost a smoky look. I don't think it's, I don't think it's been in a smoker's house. I think it is the varnish that's discoloured and gone yellow. Um, what I'd like to do is actually just give it a gentle clean, get that varnish off, re-varnish it with good London varnish, yeah. as we say, and I think it would come to life a bit. I think it's potentially quite a nice little picture. Um, of course, there was a touch of the high wine about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be paying it something of a compliment, I think. No, no, we, we don't have a constable. We just have a nice little 19th century oil painting by, I would think, a professional artist but we're never going to know who. So the only thing you can do is, commercially, is look at it, say, what would it look like cleaned up, framed, presented, uh, and hopefully it, it'll look okay. I'll have a little go at it. I'll get my wodge out, as they say, and see what we can do. There's 50 pounds, 70 pounds, 90 pounds for your picture. I'd like to say a, a little bit more on that. Yeah. I'll, I'll put another tenner on it and make it £100, but that's it. Money gone. We'll call it a day, will right? Fantastic. Coming up... In the red corner, we have dealer Tony the Tiger Gearing and our seller, Simon the Rocket Reed. In this final bout, they'll be battling over today's item of the day. But who will walk away victorious? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's the end of the day. However, just before our dealers throw in the towel, Tony has one final round to go. Seconds out. Hi, I'm Tony Gearing. Hi, Simon Reed. Simon Reed, nice yes. to meet you, Simon. Nice to meet you too. And what have you brought along here today? Um, it's some Joe Atwood boxing military related memorabilia. And Joe Atwood, where, where, when was he boxing? He was boxing in and around the, uh, World War One. So 1914, 18. 18, all, all went to 18, 19, and um, he was uh, local to the Black Country. So he's a local boxer? Yeah, that's right. Well, that's really good to, mm. to, to have something local here. Did he win a lot? Was He a He has good... a really, really good record. Really? Yes, so really he's a good record. bit of a slugger then. Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> Some great pictures of him in his uniform. Yeah. Great black and white picture there. They look as if they're sparring for the photograph, yeah. though, having a little smile on his face. So I presume these are some of his war medals? Um, yes, this, this one here is your, your war medal, and here's your victory medal. OK. The other one are presentation medals for winning. That, that's a nine-carat medal, yes. Nine-carat gold? Yes. And the other one is a, uh, a bronze medal. Uh, from It was presented by General uh, Pershing. General Pershing. This was presented by, yes. to him? Yes. And uh, obviously these are his uh, certificates. Certificates, of... yeah. Entered into this day, Joe Atwood. Three minute rounds to fight fairly and to the best of his ability under the National Sporting Club rules. So he only got paid 25% if he won. And yeah. Nothing if he drawed. No. <laughs> and most of his fights were 15 round fights as well. Yeah, heavy, heavy stuff. So how did you come by this time? Um, a friend of mine um, that collects military, uh, he was uh, selling some of his things off, and I always admired this. and. Asked him if he ever sold it, if he'd consider selling it to me. So it came about, and, and I purchased it. I mean, I, I really wouldn't know where to start to value this this right. this, um, this collection. And I think it's something that you know you get two people at auction or two local boxing clubs. Right. You know, who want who want something in their club to have on the wall from a local guy. You know, you don't know where it's going to go. One, two, three thousand pounds. Right. 
So I'm going to I'm going to retract and say that I, because I don't understand it, I think you should research it more, or just or take it to auction, and let let the people find it who who want it and understand it, and probably pay the most money for it. Okay. I really do believe you should take this to auction. So um, good luck with it. Okay. Thank Thanks you very, very much. much. I appreciate that. Most thank you. There was no offer on the day from our dealer, Tony. He thought it was not for him. There is a reserve of £1,200. Can I ask you what you paid for this originally, the, the collection? Uh, £900. OK, so you paid £900, so you're not being unreasonable. The question is, is there a buyer here to take it to £1,200? Let's see if it punches its weight here in the sale room. So, interesting lot. I have a bid already at eleven hundred. Straight in at eleven hundred pounds. That's a good sign. Telephone at eleven hundred, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred on the telephone. It's fourteen hundred on the telephone. At the telephone at fourteen, fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred. It's being sold on the telephone at sixteen hundred. £1,600, a real knockout punch. Take away the commission, you're going home with £1,360. Happy? I'm very happy, thank you. Punched way above its weight, that's the real deal. Well done, Simon, a great return on your original £900 outlay. Tony was right, the sell room was the place to be. Here we go then, it's the all important roundup to find out how well our dealers have fared with their items. Just the one item for our Tony today. I really quite like them. He liked them so much they're enjoying pride of place on his windowsill at home. Unfortunately, it was a bit of a tricky day for our Karen. Well, the little bit more is my bit of profit. She only managed to break even on the little porcelain box after selling it for £180. <laughs> I can see you're delighted with that offer. Since the dealer's day, Karen has admitted she may have paid slightly over the odds for the coin purse, as it still remains unsold. David Ford, however, had a much more successful day. Feel done. OK, Brenda, thank you very much. He managed to sell the doggy Vesta jar on for £60. It's been a bit of a blunder here. A and, it's been, and it's been stuck at the back with a bit of glue. In spite of the slight damage, David still managed to find a buyer for the oil fantastic. painting for £140. I love Moorcroft, you know. It's a fantastic factory. It is. David sold the plate on to a collector for £120, the same price Colin paid for it. Our dealers have found it a hard slog today. However, from his original outlay of £900, we can so unanimously sure declare Seller Simon the undisputed well, champion of the day. Thank you. It's been a great day here in the sale room. We've just sold some boxing memorabilia attributed to First World War boxer Joe Atwood. It brought 1,600 quid under the gavel, take home, 1360 quid. What a knockout. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.